we've just had a really interesting conversation with um, um, the team responsible for UX and uh, converting the site to an application. And uh, that was, as, as we closed that topic, we spoke about uh, well, uh, complexities and requirements of actually launching an app on the Google Store and uh, iStore. We touched on 4.7, but we haven't really delved into it. So uh, this particular panel, I have with me uh, Jason Farouja, who is the CTO of Malta Gaming Authority, of course, and I have George, George Sham Shamuja, <laughs> who is the CEO of Singular. I'm sorry, George, if I mispronounced your surname. Um, right. Um, from the perspective of 4.7 uh, update, I'd, I'd like to, uh, for the sake of the audience understanding, because it's not a topic that's currently hot in the industry, right? I'd like to go through what has actually happened, right? So it stemmed from uh, a 4.2 update where effectively the specifically Apple store has said, hey, we're running a risk with HTML5 uh, code being simply wrapped and deployed on, the, on, on our app store. Um, it's it's a, a, an element of risk for us because the app can be updated and changed without Apple knowing that that change is happening. So, and they started enforcing as early as the 4.2 guideline that apps simply must be built in native. It's not enough to just wrap a website and convert it to, to an app. You have to start building the app in native. That's not to say that HTML is not allowed, as George will point out, but it is important that the, the app itself has native elements and a native wrapper that is self-contained. Uh, in comes 4.7. I believe it was June 3rd last year. And it, it stems from, from uh, an event that happened in China. Uh, I, I will let George um, 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 explore that uh, further. But effectively, uh, Apple rolled out in uh, June last year um, a guideline which said, we cannot allow real money gambling to be contained in HTML5 uh, code in the native apps. Now, all of our games are HTML5 at the moment. And although they enforced this June 3rd, they said all the games by end of September 2019, all the gambling games, we're talking live casino, casino, slots, sports books, any sort of real money gambling app has to be completely built in native. This was impossible, of course. 30th September came and Apple said, okay, now we'll give you the 30th of January, then 30th of March, and now we're facing the latest postponement of the deadline, 30th of June. So far, Apple has not dropped uh, the apps from the App Store. We're not sure what's going to happen, but I have Jason and I have George here um, um, open to a debate about what this may mean for our industry. Hi, guys. How are you doing? Can you hear Hi. me well? How are you doing? Right, so the opening salvo. George, you've given me some really good insight as to why is Apple even enforcing this, right? Uh, so where are they coming, uh, coming from? So actually, just to go back, uh, um, we, we've seen actually lots of applications which were just kind of wrappers around the kind of HTML website. So it was kind of native kind of actually application which just loaded the URL from the web and mm -hmm. displayed the whole content from the website. Uh, uh, then there was kind of actually kind of a few cases, more than a few actually, especially last year, when there was a few applications published, especially targeting the Chinese market. The applications mm -hmm. in some occasions, they were just some e-commerce applications or some uh, uh, kind of casual games. Non-gambling related yeah, content, non you're saying. Non-money, yeah, okay. non real money gambling related yeah. applications. And overnight, they just swapped the kind of URLs and yeah, next day the applications were kind of actually real money gambling applications, which actually kind of actually a huge problem for Apple, especially when this is happening in a region where the kind of gambling is not kind of fully regulated. Mm -hmm. uh, and the Apple itself had kind of actually uh, lots of issues from the Chinese government and this information is kind of public mm -hmm. information and yeah, everyone can look up for it. So after that, they kind of came up with the kind of strict kind of rules for the, especially for the gambling operators and uh, this is a, this applies not just the gambling operators the 4.7 but for the 
uh, all sort, sort of applications out there. So they, what they want to forbid is not to keep in the same kind of situation. doesn't matter uh, you got to change your application to the real money gambling or something else. Apple just wants to control the kind of application ecosystem, and they mm -hmm. want to be sure that whatever they approve, that's what still on the kind of but actual users kind of devices. George, it's not just an application. I, I'm going to read an excerpt from the guideline. They have specifically uh, honed in on um, lotteries and real money gambling. And real money. Real money. So, so I, I'm going to read the guideline for, for the audience so that we yeah. uh, have the specific. So, not the entire guideline, it's many, many pages, but I've, yeah. I've copied. Guideline 4.7, HTML5, so guideline 4.7, HTML5 games distributed in apps may not provide access to real money gaming. So HTML5 games in specific distributed in apps may not provide access to real money gaming, lotteries or charitable donations, and they may not support digital commerce. This functionality is only appropriate for code that is embedded in the binary and can be reviewed by Apple. This guideline is now enforced for new apps. Existing apps must follow this guideline by September 3rd, 2019. Obviously, September 3rd came and went, Yeah, right. but, but the guideline is still there and it's sort of hovering over our heads. So, so to translate this, am I understanding this right? Effectively, when we say in binary, that means we take the game and we rewrite it okay. In, in uh, not, Swift or yeah, what? Not necessarily. So what it means, the actual binary, what they call the binary is the actual kind of executable kind of actual package archive, what's kind okay. of actual upload on the app store and launch on the device. So what they mean by that, and also there's kind of 4.2, which actually kind of clarifies something there mm -hmm. is that uh, you still can use the HTML5 technology, the web technologies, mm -hmm. there's no problem. And there's lots of good frameworks out there that allows you to build mm -hmm. the hybrid application size, such as Ionic, Porto, and those. You still you can use those, but what they require... I'm sorry, repeat the, the frameworks, because it's important yeah, for... An, yeah, uh -huh. Ionic. Ionic? Ionic and the, yeah, and there's a Cordova, which is kind of actually on Cordova. the market for more than 10, 10 years already. Okay. So you still can use the web technologies. What they require is that... You the whole application, whole functionality must be packaged in a kind of executable binary. You, your application shouldn't require the kind of actual, you know, to go to the server and the download executable code okay. to function. I get you. I get you. I'm sorry. I don't mean to interrupt. I just need yeah. to sort of structure no. here. I get you. However, not however, let me ask you this follow-up question. And it's something that relates to Jason as a representative of, uh, of one of the pro most prominent gaming authorities uh, within our industry. Does that mean that when binary is executable, it runs from the Apple servers or runs from whatever servers the app is hosted on? Does that mean that when I do the code, when I package, however I package, that game now is running from where? Is it still running from NetEns or Relax Gaming Servers? Uh, I would say the client side code run, runs on a user's device. Mm -hmm. It's not loaded from the server in, as it is in case of the web browser. Okay. The whole kind of files, everything, HTML kind of files, CSS, JavaScript, still is loaded from the client's device itself. But the kind of actual mechanic, game mechanics and the mess can be running on the server. Okay. So. All right. So I have a follow up here. I, I, I need to direct to Jason. So Jason, mm -hmm. again, for the audience, for the ones that are unaware of how things work, please correct me when I'm wrong in this flow. When we are certifying um, a, what used to be class four certification, can't, I, I don't know if B2B uh, <laughs> classes are still class four and so on, um, but when we are certifying a B2B operator, right, we take a look at the RNG, right? We take a look at the so source code of the game, we take a look at the front end as part of that source code. We connect everything. We make sure the game works. We make sure that it doesn't, um, that the pay tables work as, as intended. We have certain parameters, like for example, free play has to operate exactly the same as real money play, right? There's certain mm -hmm. protective elements which protect the customer from shenanigans, <laughs> right? Now, if we are to separate the front end, which I, I believe is what George is pointing to. We're going to take the pay table, the animation, the, the, the front end elements of the game, 
If we, and yesterday we had a fantastic chat about actually flow of deployment game uh, by Ashley Sandiford Sykes, um, who was the head of uh, microgaming school car for, for, for a number of years. Right? If we are going to take that element of design and, and now put it on the user device, on the operator, what, is the, what does that do to certification? Right? Uh, I agree. So, so basically, let, let's talk a bit about the, the certification requirement. And this is not just an MGA requirement, but also, I mean, I've seen it with, with other jurisdictions, so yeah. it's not something that we invented. Yeah. So basically, the, the certification requirement, as you pointed, um, uh, basically, the, the RNG is certified on its own as an RNG, which mm -hmm. provides um, a, re a return to player depending on the yeah. regulations that there are. So if it's 92%, if it's 90 five percent that depends on the jurisdiction yeah. but then of course the game the game itself has to be certified in line with that with that rng that is not just as a yeah. standalone game on its own but also incorporated as yeah so, uh, so, as, so as you look at the game parts. code so the game code says hey i'm going to operate at 95 percent rtp so mm -hmm. so the game you test the game code connected to the rng and say hey it's 95 percent rtp we're good to go Right. Agreed. 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 It has to be tested with each and every RNG that is going to be offered by by that operator. Yeah. So it's not just an RNG on its own and a game on its own. They have to be both yeah. connected and certified within the same certification provided by an independent um, the, uh, test lab. The front so, end is part of that testing process. In fact, the other element which is crucial within the certification, apart from the RNG and the return to player, is the player protection. In fact, a lot of player protection mechanisms are uh, embedded within the front end of the game, and those are critical Time and sites, very important for currency, yes, like for example, yeah. currency has to be included you next to the coins, unit. Yeah. You need to have like the, the the clock even when the game is going to um, to full, full screen, screen yeah. so that it's available. The, the the pay lines, the pay table, the explanation of the pay line. So there are a lot of elements that are basically embedded within the front end of the game that have to be available throughout the experience of the player. So if we're going to now split the, the front end from, from the back end, mm -hmm. um, that is going to be very difficult for the certification to uh, remain uh, valid. Because once they are certified, now we know for sure that all those elements that we mm -hmm. require, such as the, the currency, the time, and all of that, was embedded within the game and it was certified. Now, once we're splitting it, um, it's very difficult to be hundred percent sure that those elements are still uh, are still implemented within within the system. Mm -hmm. Because now someone else has access to that and someone else can change it. Um, um, yeah, I mean, if the game sits on the user end, um, there's there's multiple risks. I think George actually, if I remember right, when I was chatting, it was uh, brief, but I think George came up with a potential sort of uh, workaround, but something that we can implement as an industry. Um, just before I, I move on to George and see what are your thoughts on this, um, I'd, I'd like to say a couple of risks. Um, this, this news, sort of as I found out about this 4.7, I've, I've, let's say I've been shocked or said, hey, hold on a second, this is, this is relatively big. Well, one of them is, is as you said, We've certified the game as a whole. Now we're splitting that. And, 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 and we certified one entity that produced this game, right? All of a sudden, this game is spread across. Let's, let's, let's imagine it's Netent, right? How many, how many customers do they have? You know, 300, 500, right? So, so, so brrr, all of a sudden, every customer, let's say, just for the sake of the argument, it's 2025, and everyone has a native app. So now that is 500 points that we need to control. The, the control aspect of who is doing what, I think, just falls flat on its face. Um, uh, and, unless there's something missing. The, the secondary element is actually getting the IP, uh, getting the, the source, getting the game providers to, uh, to, to change their way of operation. As, as you've mentioned, Jason, during our conversation, you said, OK, well, we've done this once before. We've done it from Flash to HTML. So what's happening now? I, I, I would argue it's not as clear cut, but I do know that George had some ideas on this and I, I want to hear your thoughts, George. Uh, wh where do we go from here? What's the solution here? Yeah, actually talking about the kind of certification, I fully agree that uh, doesn't matter what kind of solution you're gonna come up, you gotta require separate uh, certification for this because it's totally different medium to other different applications. So yeah, mobile applications should be kind of certified separately. That's extra job there. Okay. But when it comes to actually kind of minimizing the kind of this kind of effort, 
one kind of approach is actually what kind of Apple ecosystem itself provides. So this is kind of application bundles. Yeah. So what operators can do, let's say net and they can build a slot. They create, they can build the application bundle, which is not uh, self-executable by itself because mm -hmm. it still needs the main application, but mm -hmm. the bundle is already kind of binary bundle. It's already mm -hmm. kind of actually packaged. And also it's signed, signed by Apple, signed by certifications, and it also gives you kind of code signing checksum. Okay, kind, that makes yeah, sense. So like what you're saying, kind of let me just translate that for, for, for me, right? <laughs> for the layman, because... Uh, so, so what, what you're saying is, hey, okay, so we have a game provider. It, it rolls on to a, a common JSMA before going, hey, guys, we've done this once before, flash to HTML. It's not something that we haven't done. When, when, when push came to shove, we had to do it. Flash was dying and we had to update. So you're saying, all right, um, the game providers themselves have to adopt the new reality that as they develop, they're developing front end for multiple medium channels, right? Exactly. One of those channels, HTML5 for web, great. X, Y, Z for TV, doesn't matter, whatever channel our future is, but here is native app. And we must create a front-end code for native app. And that is executable deliverable, signed by Apple when it's, when, when, when it's delivered, signed by MGA, signed by whoever needs to be signed. And without those uh, elements, and I believe you, you're saying they are possible to achieve, the front-end won't fu function. You, you, you change something, the signatures fail, I, I would imagine. And, yeah, and exactly. So once you, you, you can't mess about yeah, sure. Once you build the application kind of bundle uh, and you sign by your certification, which is mm -hmm. kind of actually tie, actually bind it to the mm -hmm. Apple developer account as mm -hmm. well. Uh, if somebody changes anything inside, first mm -hmm. of all, the Apple has kind of actually tools there when it tries to execute the application, not to launch mm -hmm. the kind of package if it's not correctly signed as mm -hmm. well. And second, for the kind of actually, uh, let's say for the MGA itself, uh, if you want to check if it's the exactly same kind of actual bundle mm -hmm. that was kind of certified, it's really simple. You just uh, download the application, unpack because it's at, um, they just the archive file, mm -hmm. uh, take the particular kind of actually application bundle from the net end, some mm -hmm. particular slot, again, unpack that bundle, and there's the checksum. The, the checksum, you approve that mm -hmm. that's exactly the version of the bundle which was certified and approved. If there's some uh, discrepancy there, then uh, it's, so uh, there is a, it's there's evident a, there, that, yeah. There's a manageable process where yeah. a regulator could actually uh, modify their own regulatory process and say, okay, we're going to have yes. to uh, look toward the future. I mean, we've done this once before, to be fair. I mean, 20, 2016, we had to update the regulation for 2004. Exactly. It's something that happens. So you say, okay, we can unpack this and there, there is a way. We, we have to account for a native as a channel now, right? We have to account exactly. for that as a separate channel. Um, we don't have that problem with Google, but again, the concept stands. If tomorrow uh, that channel has its own influencing forces, we, we're going to have to account for that. Yeah. Uh, I will propose, not a counter argument, uh, a parallel from the regulatory perspective. Purely, we're talking purely pr from the regulatory perspective. Something that as I was thinking and talking about this to a few people, something popped up. And that was Alderney, right? S uh, years ago, I mean, we're talking 2009, maybe 2008, uh, I had to apply for an older license for one of my operations. And uh, the concept was quite, I, I enjoyed the concept of that licensing jurisdiction. So I could choose uh, the class of license I wanted. And if I pay for the big license, right, uh, I can't remember what the cost was, but effectively, I, the operator, am responsible for all the content on my website. So I need to test the games, I need to test micro gaming, I need to test NetInt, I need to test Relax, I need to test all of the st all, everything I want to put on, I'm responsible for that. The RNG, the code, everything. Something goes wrong, I'm the liability point as an operator. Similarly, um, we, the, the, the game provider could buy the same license and say all of these operators are on my license. So the, game, the license holder is responsible for the operators that plug in. So to make sure that, you know, the, the, the monies are paid out and all that. The, the, the entire user journey process actually sits under a single license where the responsibility is shifted. In cases of native apps, it, it, um, it, it could be a plausible solution where, where we shift the responsibility um, for, for that particular application onto the operator license. Uh, I don't know what kind of complexities are there, Jason. I'm, I'm not sure from the MGA perspective. 
but uh, <laughs> it's something that I was pondering. No, I, I, I agree um, on, on this aspect. So basically, whenever we receive even a dispute or a com player complaint about this, mm -hmm. um, we always get back to the B2C operator, mm -hmm. what, what we used to call the, uh, the class one, class two and class three, those that are actually mm -hmm. offering the game to the to the player. So irrespective of whether the game was actually approved for the for the B2B, if um, something happened when, uh, whenever that, that player is actually playing, we have to actually first speak with, with the operator because they are offering the game mm -hmm. on their website, on their mobile device, on the tablet. So irrespective of whether the game was, was actually um, approved for, you mentioned, micro gaming and etc., yeah, okay. we have to actually speak to the B2C operator because they are still responsible um, for what they are offering on their website. Remember yes. that nowadays it's more difficult than before so because you have multiple games from different providers, some of them approved by us, some of them not approved by us. You're switching from different jurisdictions. Um, yes. You can have B2B providers that are approved in other jurisdictions um, uh, ha and you are offering their games, uh, but you don't need actual, the, the actual approval from, from yes. the MGA. So it is more difficult there. So, I mean, there is, so what I'm hearing here is there is some sort of framework where this is plausible even um, uh, and possible. Um, something that, um, couple of things I wanted to address uh, just before we kind of wind this up because there isn't, there isn't a solution. It's just sort of introducing the topic to the wide audience, right? It's something we have to consider. 30th of June is the latest deadline that the Apple said, hey, we're going to remove everything. Chances are it's not going to happen. But let's uh, imagine imagining a scenario where they actually wipe all the content from the App Store. We'll be hearing about this left, right and center, right? It's going to be quite a noisy uh, element. Right now it's quietly you know, brimming under the surface simply because it's not, it doesn't have a direct influence. It's something just looming over our head. Um, we spoke about games in particular, right? Casino games. But we're looking at sports book here. We're looking at lotteries. We're looking at uh, poker. We're looking at any real money play. Mm -hmm. So, uh, George, with your experience in, in building advanced technological solutions, what are we looking here in terms of risk elements for the industry. I mean, developer resource for HTML5, all you want. Developer resource for Swif Swift and binary, I don't think that's uh, as, as easily accessible yeah, as, exactly. as uh, right? Um, and from yeah. the perspective of converting these products, what are we looking at? Is it a small undertaking? Or to convert a sports book to native is something that, you know, is gonna take 12 months. What uh, yeah, well, based on our experience, we kind of launched kind of a couple of times for a couple of operators and native application, which can utilize the HTML5 kind of the web mm -hmm. technologies, mm -hmm. but underlying la layer was fully native. So based on the experience, so what I can say is that, yeah, it's kind of big undertaking for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, even if you can utilize all the client code base, whatever you have in your sportsbook kind mm -hmm. of product in terms of the web technologies, still you're going to need some modifications. I'm mm -hmm. talking on the, uh, still on the kind of web technology kind of side. And then you need to extend that functionality with the native kind of actual capabilities mm -hmm. as well. Uh, yeah, uh, also I agree that kind of should to get like a native developers that it's going to be Objective C or the Swift doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. It's not that easy. And even if you got to get to get the kind of actual senior kind of actual level kind of developer, that's even kind of more difficult. But uh, based on the experience, what we've seen is that uh, if, let's say, per product, you're going to get one senior kind of actual native developer, mm -hmm. that's more or less kind of enough because yeah. the rest of the kind of job can be abstracted still on the kind of web technology side. And uh, the one senior developer or let's say one senior and one intermediate yeah. kind of two guy kind of actually uh, team can handle the conversion. Yeah. Then again, it goes down how far you want to go, how far you want to I mean, actually well, place your HTML part. I, I think what I'm hearing yeah. here, George, is I mean, there is def definitely limitation to resource either way. Yeah. Yes, one senior person can probably uh, drive the solution architecture. We may rely on the developers we have at hand to contribute, but nonetheless, the, the resource pool, uh, we, we, yeah. we might be looking at a new niche market of, of developers. Uh, exactly, developing exactly. Um, um, I'd like to try and close this off rather than meandering around in circles. Sort of, what are the possible outcomes here? So outcome one, the industry adapts. That, that means, uh, sportsbook conversions, which are quite intense, operators 
uh, a certification on their sportsbook products and so on uh, fr from the regulatory side. I'm not talking MGA. We're talking regulation across across the regions. Um, conversion of product um, is slow, painful, and I think there's a, a, a lot of influencing factors here. Um, option two, just don't use a, a, the App Store. Um, yeah. I've had a very engaging chat uh, with, with uh, a couple of interesting people uh, uh, talking about the conversion of, of site to app with, with, uh, from the US, with, with uh, benchmarks of just how much value native app contributes. And I think the option of just not using native app is not something that we can embark on. And the option three, which is something I, I had a question for uh, George, is as an industry moving toward Apple and saying, okay, conversion is almost impossible. It's possible, but it's, it's a massive undertaking and too many moving pieces and open-ended loops. Is there, you've spoken about signing apps and signature apps and so on and so forth. Do you envisage a middle ground where, where, where we can use the core HTML code, we can use the, the technology we have, but we have some added signatory value, some added functions, some sort of security where we can't yeah. just update the app just like that. So how, yeah, uh, that might happen, but actually, again, actually going back and actually uh, analyzing the how Apple approached things, uh, I don't think that's going to happen because uh, they are kind of, Apple is the company who killed the flash itself yeah. because if they decide one day that's the way we are going, it that's is, it, that's they it, don't care it. how big mm. you are. Yeah. Uh, and also, we uh, in a gambling industry, even recently, uh, we've seen, I personally have seen in some uh, operators' cases, not uh, necessarily our clients, when the operators kind of delivered the kind of native application, but still Apple rejected it without any single explanation. And even the end of the kind of actual the, uh, kind of message that was written that, please don't get in touch. We won't be able to provide the details. I have seen that, and I even can provide the proof for that. So uh, it's uh, to be honest, it's uncertain. Okay. Why? I would say on the technology side, it's possible to convert the existing HTML kind of yeah. actually applications to the native with fully utilizing whatever we already have in our hands, at least 80, 85 percent for sure. But we will require some native developers as well. Okay. The, the, where the kind of quality product. Closing yeah. closing arguments. From an MGA perspective, Jason, where do you see this going? What's the next step for MGA? What do you think? Uh, in fact, what I was going to mention about that, um, uh, first of all, MGA actually doesn't make a lot of a difference between uh, the game offered on a mobile device or the game offered on, on the website. I mean, they shouldn't be different. Otherwise, you have to be certifying each and every game for each and every device, which, of course, is, it's costly. I mean, nowadays, the game is certified. We receive the, mm -hmm. so the checksum, the MD5 hash sum, the, the SHA256. Mm -hmm. we, we receive all of that for each and every game. But now, since we're splitting it, since we're splitting the front end from the back end, we're saying that each and every game has to be certified for each and every device. Because um, for a mobile device, the front end will be different um, uh, than, than the actual game. But for a website, then it is completely because, embedded yeah, you, in the you, website. You're also so, looking at that element. Sorry to interrupt you, but you're right. Because there is no way that the human ingenuity is not going to walk into this and say, hey, hold on, am I coding for native? I'm going to code in native. I'm going to change the, where the thumb position of the spin button is. I'm going to change this. I'm going to change that. I'm going to adapt. I, have, uh, I know which device it is. I know, right? There is no way that we, if, if we're going to take that undertaking, we're just going to stop there and do a replica. And now yeah. all of a sudden, not only do you have different channels for interface, but you have different interface, right? You have different functions. So, so agree, yeah. where, where do you see MGA here? I mean, w would you be open to such an undertaking? No, definitely we are we, we, we are very open for, for these kinds of uh, technology upgrades that we see uh, every day. I mean, last year we had we had crypto, um, and now <laughs> this is something which is completely new. So we are always open to, to these 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 kind of, of issues, and uh, basically we would like to remain as technology neutral as possible. Mm -hmm. But of course. Um, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of implications here, especially for the operators, not just the cost, because the cost timing can be undertaken in a couple of months or years, but also the, the, the technical part, because we're saying like certifying each and every game and monitoring each and every device because games no, are different. Be so uh, 
uh, we, we, we have to understand better what, what Apple is, is actually doing because now we're saying that the deadline was March, then June. First of all, I, I, I doubt it's going to be June. I, I doubt that um, in, in a month's yeah. time I'm going on, on the App Store and I'm going to find I zero do. games HTML5. So I doubt that will happen. But of course, from our end, we will start um, working on it because if it was made available online, it's definitely going to happen. In I the mean, near future. guys, Apple did not retract this. So far, all they're doing is just pushing the deadline forward. I can't imagine a scenario where this just keeps on going. At some point in time, the, the ax has to fall on one side or the other. And I think preparation in this case is key. Because once it does fall, everyone's going to be, not panicking necessarily, but people will be seeking solutions. And they will be turning to MGA, they will be turning to regulators, they will be turning to, to technology leaders to try and understand this. Uh, I do believe that there is already uh, an association of, of large gaming companies trying to argue this with Apple, but as George said, I doubt anything is going to be yeah. pushed forward. Look, guys, um, I'm, thank you for the time. I mean, this wasn't really a deep tech necessary conversation, but it's very much relevant to the technology that's about to emerge. George, I don't know whether you had anything to add as a closing argument, um, but... Yeah, Bob, I fully agree. So I guess... Uh, it's the end day it's gonna happen and it's better to be prepared. So yeah, I, I, be sorry, I mean, so. personally, I, I think Jason, from an MGA perspective, uh, bringing down a, a think tank, bring, bringing around the think tank, people like George, people like, like you know, that, that are uh, technically driven in the industry, um, it's, pro it's probably the right time to kind of see how this may play out um, b before the axe falls, you know, because at that point in time, I think everyone's gonna be going, what's going on. You know? Crazy. <laughs> Guys, I agree. I agree. thank you so much. Very interesting chat. Thanks, Igor. Thanks, George. Thanks a lot. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you.